Ladies and gentle thems, people and persons, beings of all ages, welcome to Writing Knights Press Sword Fight. 40 uninitiated, picture of a poetry slam mixed with a rap battle, mixed with a comedy act, mixed with a storytelling set, mixed with a UFC fight, mixed with a WWE show, and you'll get the idea. A son of a bitch. I can't <laughs> okay. The wind was just reacting. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm not wow. going to say all that part again. Maybe I will anyway. <laughs> Here, um, put the other wow. one of those in front. Oh, wait. Hold, 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 hold on. Flip. All right, that'll be fine. Is this still recording? Is it dead? I think so, yeah. Hold on a second. still recording, yes. It is still recording? All right, awesome. Am I in the camera here? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, it is cool. still going. Am I still in the camera on that one? I lost the <laughs> stopwatch. All right, gust the wind. All right, a little bit more back. Try again. Here? That's better. All right, cool. For the uninitiated, picture a poetry slam, mixed with a rap battle, mixed with a comedy act, mixed with a storytelling set, mixed with a UFC fight, mixed with a WWE show, and you'll get the idea. Call it ultimate writing or mixed literary arts. What you are about to see is a head-to-head -head battle of wits and words with a bit of trash talk sprinkled in. We take two fighters, put them in a three-round competition. Round one, two minutes each. Round two, three minutes each. Round four, Sorry. Round three, four minutes each. Fighters can squeeze as many pieces in the round. Example, if you can squeeze 80 haiku in two minutes, go for it. However, there is no grace period. When time is up, fighters must stop or they are disqualified. The rounds are judged on a 10 point must system. The winner gets 10 points, the loser gets nine or less. Judges are asked to, to judge based on six main qualities, performance, under clarity of speech, efficiency of time use and passion, and under content, word choice, impact, and originality. The seventh quality the judges should apply to themselves, consistency. If they judge one fighter on a certain quality, they should use the same rubric on the other fighter. While sword fight programs ask the fighters to portray characters, all scores are legitimate and contribute to the sword fight's persistent and ever-progressing storyline. We do have three sponsors for the Grand Showcase this afternoon. USA Quick Prints, local to Canton, Ohio. Rebel Salmon Media, out of Virginia and also Cleveland. And, what's the other one? Arch and Stark, straight out of Stark County. You can find our other videos on the Writing Nights Facebook page. Yay, our sponsors! Yay, our sponsors! Woo! We have three judges who I will show you before we start the thing. Dan Arman, one of our vendors over here, by his books, they're great. Casey Christofik, one of our newest Writing Nights authors, also by his book, it's amazing. And then Kat Russell, who does not have a book with us, but I think she has her own books, which are probably amazing, because she is amazing. So buy those as well. Fighters, are you ready? In this corner, we have a local Local teenager who believes pain is the views of poetry. Her name is Francesca Maluco. Maluco. In this corner, she is the wicked witch of wordcraft, the literary Khaleesi of Canton, Ohio, and your feminist hero, Daria Quinn. We will flip a coin to determine who goes first in the rounds. If we can find a coin. This is not a coin. Heads, tails. Sorry, you want to call it? Heads, tails. Tails, sorry. 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 Perfect right here. Alright, I'll just... It's not going to go I put it on cover, so... It okay, cool, 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 cool. Alright, so when 10 seconds are... Like, it's 10 seconds till, I will... Is that loud enough? Yeah. Okay. 
I will knock on this three times. Ready? Five, four, three, two, one, start. A passing glance of wicked ambition. She takes the sting, smiling as she greets a bloated figure of spoiled indulgence. She proceeds to let him dominate the conversation as if his ideas had merit. She responds by conceding her defeat and watching silently as he claims her ideas as his own. Invisible woman never meant to be seen or heard, but when she speaks, her words become the void. Give, them, give the words to a man, and he's praised for his prestigious insight. And let a woman speak. Mm. Dress rehearsals are for amateurs. Life is a stage and you are a player, the main character of a story that is your life, and the genre of your story is as ill-defined as your character. Your life has no discernible plot, and you're often not even the focus. The best lines always go to someone else, and lucky you, you didn't even get a script. You have to improvise your way through this mess of a play called life, and you have to do it live, every night, with a new scenario every single time until the day you die. If your life was a book, it'd be practically unreadable, assembled together by a team of incompetent writers, only one of which gets to be you. No proofreader, no editor, no publisher, no distributor. You might have a dozen readers at best, and they only read the good chapters. Hey, look at me, I'm a book that nobody reads. <laughs> because no one wants to read books, they'll wait for it to be made into a movie. A movie that's about as faithful to the source material as your ex-girlfriend who left you during pre-production to pursue her career as a leading lady in someone else's studio feature. Your novel sucked, the movie's even worse, and you can't escape any of this because this is your life, and you only get one take, because dress rehearsals are for amateurs. Woo! Daria, well done, well done. Next up, Francesca Falugo. Woo! Woo! Come a little closer. I'm afraid and that- And be loud! Yes, definitely be. <coughs> All right, five, four, three, two, one, start. Suicide. Something I thought as a kid was a mere joke. I mean, why would someone actually want to kill themselves? As kids, pretending to be dead was just a game we played during free time. Someone would pretend to shoot us, would lay on the ground, and close our eyes with our tongues sticking out. But who would actually want to stay in that state forever? Suicides. Something I thought was just an exercise. You run back and forth several times, and when the instructor said suicide, I silently reply with a snipe remark, and I say, "Well, I can only do that once, and then I wouldn't be able to do it again." Suicide was the punchline to my best joke. Someone who eventually asked me, "Hey, what's up?" I say, "The sky, gas prices, and suicide rates." I actually believed I was funny. Suicide was just a joke until I was 15, hospitalized for suicidal ideation. Su suicide wasn't a punch sign anymore, but just a punch in the chest, taking six of my classmates. Suicide wasn't so funny anymore, sitting at, standing there staring at your vacant chair. Suicide wasn't so funny anymore when someone else had to sit in that chair so he wouldn't stare at the void where you once were. We sat silently and stared at your chair. We saw you the day before and we felt your presence. We heard your voice. You were alive, but how can you fade away so quickly? Needless to say, suicide wasn't a joke anymore. All right. Louder, please. Okay, let's take it back to the Gilded Age. Objects painted to fierce gold, chairs, tables, boxes, the rich living atop the world, the expense of the poor man. Keep going. A worthless piece of shit. This guy is as gold. Welcome to my gilded age. I pick myself as gold. Alright. Woo! Alright. Alright, Francesca! Woo! Woo! So Daria. How do you feel? I uh I feel good. I feel that uh I feel we're off to a good start. Alright, alright. Cool, 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 cool. Let's give him a round of applause. All right. All right, so Francesca is going to begin the second round. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. It's confusing. This is my first time. <coughs> it's your first time. I understand. It's only right. our second time, you know? This is the three-minute round. Five. Wait, hold on. Camera. That'll, that'll be fine, I think. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Jeff was my friend. We met every Sunday and he offered a bottle of gin. When Jeff was my friend, he told me his secrets, his tactic, and lies. Our meetings were short, just like her life. He giggled inside. You know, said Jeff, bargaining with me, dying isn't that bad. It's more of an not an ending, more of a beginning. Def stood up from his chair and walked to the window, looked out, saw the stars, and pulled the shade, quickly walking back to his chair. Def took a seat and tugged on his cloak. Why does everyone fear me? Def exclaimed, stood up from his chair and summoned a spear. People can only see me if they are deaf. Def walked towards me, spear in hand. If you can see me, what do you think that makes you? Death grabs his spear with both hands, lifted it above his head, and strikes me in the heart. Death was my friend until I became death too. Another one. The seed of my prayer is planted as my meds begin to fade away. My true golden hour, I sit, rest, and wallow in my brain, and what my brain once was. I swim in this glory, and I come to my applause for Francesca. Woo! Yeah, Francesca! All right. Ready, Daria? Cool, you're good, right? There. Five, four, three, two, one, start. Before something, there is nothing. No mind, no memory, no concept of self. Just the vast, empty darkness of nothing. Pieces of you are being assembled in the dark by biological machinery you too will soon possess. You are not still yet you, yet those who wait for you have already begun to define you. Your name, your gender, the early forms of your identity, the software for your hardware is already being coded, programming for which the vast majority will be overwritten before you even begin to retain your own memories. You are still not yet you, yet those charged with programming you have already defined you. Your beliefs, your values, the very integral core of your being, all the choices that were yours to make, stolen from you before you had the capacity to choose. You are still not yet you, yet those who've stolen your right to define you already have. Everything you are, everything you believe, everything you are ever going to be needs to be resisted from the moment of your birth. 
you are to ever become one. True dreams of Midwestern bliss lost among the flyover states in the rare places where freaks like me gather in droves. Like the Beatopia from the Blind Melon video, I finally found a place where people like me exist. Except they don't. <laughs> True dreams of Levittsburg, and I can never return and call that home. Because home was a place I had never been. Only the places I can imagine in my dreams. I never felt as if I were permanent. I was always just passing through. The people who were here today would be gone by next week. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is stable. Nothing gold ever stays, but neither does anything else. True dreams of Youngstown, and I'm stuck with all I've got. Dreams come here to die, and chances are I will too. The only stability here is the inevitability of failure. That's why everyone tries to run away from Ohio. No one stays here because they want to. We stay here because we can't afford to go home anymore. Except that Ohio is always home, I guess. Maybe that's why I never felt that way. True dreams of Wichita, and I have no concept of it. All I know are gray skies, football, and trailer parks. I spent my entire life believing that I was just passing through. But Ohio won't let me leave you until it takes away every last possible dream I may ever have in Wichita. None? Who? So Francesca, how do you feel? Pretty good. Louder. Pretty good. All right. All right. We're going to flip the coin for the third round. Heads, tails. Francesca, heads, tails. Heads, heads. Heads, you go first. Coin sponsored by Rebel Salmon Media. <laughs> All right. It's better because everyone can see what it shows up as. Yep. All right. Five. This is four minute round. Five, four, three. Two, one, start. I am not you, and you are not me. But I feel your emotions like the breeze in my skin. Sometimes it feels like I am not the sole occupant of this body. You are my roommate. We are divided by our walls, but sometimes I let you in. I never told you to leave, knowing you'd never return. The breeze brushes me as I wander off. You occupy my thoughts, so where is the heck is my rent? I let you stay till you got back on your feet, but you overstayed your welcome, leaving with my pair of shoes. I've been destroyed in the way that it feels like I was the one kicked out of my body, and not you. Uh, you I am not you, and you are not me, but I feel your every thought, and I fix your problems as if they were mine. I am not you, and you are not me, but I beg to differ as you were my roommate. Yellowing flowers, lacking our lust, dying in the sun, and tropically I intervene on your interlude, Inesca inescapable, inevitably, I fall in love with your melody. Divinity in motion, your every care, every prayer is a step, every, your every step is a prayer. Tell the deacon I won't be at mass. I've been to your sermon already. Tenderly, you take my body, caress me as your own, knowing I am faulty. I associate your smile with the curve of the moon, accentuating your curves. Smile lest we can't kiss another day. Offending my soul, you fade to black. I leave my body. My soul resides on another plane. Of course, I'm alone again. Loathing the interworkings of my life, like a bother, bother, butterfly, you flee, leaving me to my own devices. Yet, I don't know as a Poetry is just those who don't have, who lack the attention. Poetry is just those who don't have the attention.
poetry is just literature for those who lack the attention span for reading books. <laughs> <laughs> psychopath in the corner eating my bag of chips. This will probably be the most peaceful thing I accomplished today. and blunt crayons cannot color after touching the fiery embers of an angry soul. Death to thus and death to thine, I cannot shine. As you hold your steering wheel, your left hand rested upon your lap. Every jerk of the wheel is a twist of the safe that shields my heart. We are deaf until the clock ticks long enough. Right. Alright. Woo! Nice timing there. Pretty much. Alright. Last performer of the match. Daria Quinn! Woo! Five, four, three, two, one, start! Oh, get red or get dead. Everybody go to bed. Kim Jong-un just got himself a warhead. Trump's in the White House, we're in the poorhouse. White folk talking about Nazis like they're Mickey Mouse. Caging up immigrants, snatching up all the kids. Institute a travel ban, send them back to Pakistan. Send a billion dollars to institute some space cops while telling some poor folks to stop buying cell phones. You can either eat or you can have health care. You can't have both. So poor folks, poor folks best beware. Spray tan America is kind of a shithole. I don't really care, do you? I don't think so. Your flag is red, your flag is blue, your flag is white and so are you. Placed atop your concessions truck, you have just made a political statement at this so-called family event. So when you shout at me as a coward in the distance that my politics have no place here, may I remind you that flag on your truck is a political statement. The American flag is not a benign symbol. It is the authoritarian reinforcement of a jingoistic value system that demonizes the other and uplifts the privilege of the white male, whom you just happen to be sitting in your truck, shouting at me in the distance, like a coward, trying to silence a dissenting voice. Because your flag is your politics, and you support the system that I speak out against. If gun control and civil rights are words that children's ears should never hear, and gun violence, slavery, discrimination, and segregation are even greater crimes against our children, silence will not end this injustice, and waiting for an allegedly appropriate hour to speak only results in delays and deference. The tools the white man uses to hold everyone else down, tell police in our anger, calling our demonstrations at public events inappropriate. Now, if now is not the time to discuss my civil rights, white man, when is? When does this marginalized citizen, citizen's mere existence stop being political long enough to have a proper conversation about my rights? It doesn't. So I will stand here and I will speak my piece for children's ears to hear because it's only then will my voice carry weight. But when your children learn of the injustices you've allowed in the name of preserving white America, they will learn what we have always known. That your flag is a tool of the oppression we face every single day living under it. And the promises this nation makes to your children, that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, in the pursuit of happiness. Every last word of that is a lie, and the flag that sits upon your truck is a reinforcement of that lie. I will not protect your lies for the sake of your children. I will speak truth to power for every child in this nation here, because they deserve to be told the truth about you, about the flag that sits upon your truck, the political statement that you wave in my face to oppress and silence me. When I take this mic, this is no longer a family event. It is an educational seminar about the real America. The America that is red and yellow and brown and black 
and covered in rainbows. The America that your flag doesn't represent. Your flag grips with red blood on the hands of white skin, burying the shameful blue underneath its white stars. And I will not stand silent in the face of your political statement any longer. <laughs> Woo! Got 20 minutes. You have one 20 seconds. Got something short? <laughs> When you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. So stop doing what you don't know you're doing, Donald. Oh, shit! <laughs> Hi, thank you very much. Thank you, Casey. All right. All right, so Before we read the scores, we want to open the floor to anyone who laid an open challenge. In the meantime, Skylark will be collecting the scores from the judges, so anybody who wants to engage in a sword fight with someone else? Anybody? 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 Hey Julia, you want to fight somebody? Thank you everybody for coming. How's the audience feeling about tonight? Woo! How many are here for the showcase? Right there, that's Kat, that's Casey, that's the camera. I should be using the live camera for this, but it's fine. That's Don, that's Dan, that's Ryan, Skylark doing math, Leo and Barry back there, and their significant others, and Francesca's family, and I don't know, are you Francesca's family too? No, I'm Carrie's family. Carrie's family? <laughs> awesome. You own a bookstore? I don't Okay. So do I. That's Rose. She's she's with Dan, or Dan's with her. That's David, and uh, I think Ethel is gone now. How's the scores coming? Almost there. Scores are almost there. We're not going to stare at Skylark while it happens. Alright. Yeah, it doesn't speed anything up. It does not speed things up. <laughs> Math does not go faster when you're being watched. In the meantime, if we could have both of the uh, yeah. competitors come up here. No, How do I look on the camera? and 28-29, the winner of a split decision, Daria Quinn. Yeah, you anything you'd like to say, Francesca? Congratulations. Congratulations. Any, any trash talk? You did a really good job. Yeah. <laughs> She's better. She's better. Trash talk. Burn. She's like a good sport. <laughs> this is why we need to have a rookie division. Okay. Yes, I, mean, okay. This, 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 I, I feel like a bully right now. I feel like I'm yes. taking on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and you know, and her first feature is going to be tonight at the Brand Showcase at Avenue Arts. Yes. So if you're not here, be here because she won't be making her debut. Yeah. And as far as that goes, I mean, all she's ever done before that was open mic. So I mean, I don't know what you got. What are you doing? Stepping up. When you don't even have the experience behind you, but you know, hey, you did. 
You, you didn't get completely destroyed. It was a good decision. Sorry. Got it. Sorry. Round of applause for both of them again. Woo! People on Facebook Live, we're going to start the show in a little less than a half hour. People online, same deal. Yeah, you don't care. It's online. All right, thank you very much. We'll see you over at the main ship. Did you stop that? Thank you.